The next day my bivvy bag arrived and Alan helped me work out a route to get through Cornwall, Devon, Somerset, all the way up to Wiltshire. Oh, thank you very much. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Thank you, thank you. See you later. I will text you and let you know where I am. Okay? See you later. Although I'd only known him a couple of days, Alan was the saviour of this expedition, and so I was sad to see him go. My plan had changed from taking the coastal route to going inland to stick to the town so I could get some cash out. Alan had let me transfer some money over to his account so I could have some cash to tide me over, but this now meant I had to take the busy and dangerous A roads into the next town of Bodmin. This reminds me of when I went hitchhiking in uh, Nova Scotia. I mean, the roads were way, way scarier than this. But it still wasn't very pleasant. I was approaching a dangerous slip road about a mile just out of the next town when this happened. Freeze! That little car there is a policeman and yeah, he had to pick me up because apparently a bunch of people were calling the police saying that they were worried about me getting hit by a car on the A30. So he took me to uh, Camborne, which is only a mile, like literally a mile, so I'm not going to really count that as cheating, you know, so without getting hit by a car I suppose and I didn't really want to get arrested, so that's the, uh, that's just what happened. Now I'm in Camborne. I've got about a two hour walk to Red Roof and then uh, I'll find some of the camp. Today has been one of those days And I've had many other days just like today There's a park bench with my name on it but I can't go the residents complained of the stairway And I'm spitting on my shoes to make them shine Most likely I'm least of my time If you look rough enough they pay you but too rough And they're afraid of you so drink yourself to drooling and fine I'm an absent-minded woman cause I need to travel light Will I drink myself to death or will I stop? So really this is just fucking car park for police officers, but it says that there's a farm that way. So I might go see if like a uh, public byway or something, but it said, <sighs> no idea who I'm. So I'm going to pretty much camp up here. I've got a tap for water, so <sighs> golden. Go get a job, go earn some money. So we can drink at half past eight in the morning Then by 3.40 we'll hit the drunk tank And sleep there in the morning So it's getting close to uh, bedtime now and sleep there I'm just literally just chilling here Not doing a lot <laughs> So there's my uh, baby bag It is literally like a coffin, it's so small But the good thing is at least it keeps you warm So I probably won't end up freezing in there for one thing it's waterproof it's got a nice little window I like that and that is gonna be home for tonight <laughs> and probably for the next three months so anyway good night so I just wanted to show you where I stayed last night uh, I was gonna camp out in the field where the farmer said I could but I ended up started talking to the uh, farmer's daughter so she offered me to stay in her caravan so I ended up staying there last night which was really really nice um, but then we ended up staying all night or staying up all night talking and drinking cider which was cool I ended up making a bunch of cool friends so now I'm just getting myself sort of packed up and sorted and ready and then I'm gonna go and leave and today I'm gonna try and head for Roche I was back on the main roads again which proved to be treacherous but not as treacherous as the blazing heat and the heat wave that was hitting Cornwall at this time This heat is absolutely relentless. I am sweating worse than the bibliophile in a library. 
about to sit down out of the sun because it's just absolutely fucking brutal today. You can see my shirt is saturated and I've still got 13 miles to go. So just need to keep drinking loads of water. And just yeah, just keep fucking slogging it. My feet are starting to hurt now a bit. I'm definitely getting some blisters and I'm just absolutely so hot all the time. It's just so uncomfortable. I'm in uh, Ladock now. Um, I've been in Ladock for about two hours because I decided to go to the pub to charge my phone. My phone died and I ended up falling asleep in the pub garden. <laughs> That's how hot it is today. I'm going to name you Pippin because you're ginger. How's that? Okay, I'm going to go now. I'm still like two hours away from where I'm supposed to be, so I decided to just camp up next to this road. That night, the battery of my phone died and I couldn't film anything else, but I didn't quite make it to rock in the end. Instead, I found a rather uncomfortable spot just next to the road to sleep in my bivy bag for the first night since I had it. Good morning. This is uh, the 29th of May. It's Tuesday. And this is the first day I've actually woken up in a really, really bad mood. I actually did sleep, but I slept in basically a gnat's nest. So everywhere I move, there's just flies everywhere and it's really horrible um, and my bivvy I woke up and it was literally dripping wet because it has no ventilation literally like it keeps you warm right up until the morning when it gets cold and you're then saturated in basically whatever condensation is built up throughout the night and then on top of that all off I've got about four blisters there's nowhere to actually uh, sit and sort that out, so I'm going to have to wait. I'm just going to have to keep walking. I've also found a hole in my boot already. So this is day five and I've got a hole in my boot already. Um, and my inner soles are also starting to fail, so I need to buy some more of those. Let's just show you the fucking pool of water. That is all just condensation. Aquaquest, the bivy that doesn't leak, but you get wet anyway. Getting really annoyed now because I uh, I was walking up the A road and well on the way to Bodmin, literally two miles away, really 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 close. Slow progress. There's a lot of cars whizzing by, which uh, looks pretty dangerous. And then I saw a little uh, sign that says public footpath, so I ended up going onto this public footpath. Realised that fucking god knows where the footpath is. It's just a gigantic field. Okay, so I've done a really stupid thing and I ended up finding myself on another field with no... Oh god, all these bloody cows are right here. They don't look very happy with me. Um, so I've got to get over this fence, there's no way of opening it. But there's a bunch of cows and not very happy, but I'm here. And I also stunned myself with stinging them. Fuck. Well, the cows are literally just sat there, we're kind of in a stalemate. They won't leave me alone and I need to get through or I have to turn back. So I don't really know what to do, so I'm going to just sit here and have a cup of tea and think about what to do. What have I done? Okay, so I've tried two fields, I can't get fucking anywhere, so I'm just going to have to head back to the road and just I'm going to have to fucking risk it, aren't I? Okay, that's the road I'm talking about, and although it looks kind of big on camera, there's nowhere to fucking walk at all. Literally nowhere. Okay, I might have made it to a slightly wider part of the road now, but holy fucking Christ, that was so close. I ran out of grassy verge, so I was just walking on the road and people were literally just going straight by, like, super close, you know. So, hopefully it will stick like this for a bit, 
and well, I'm committed to this road now. So, but I'll get to Bodmin now. I'm so close to the end of this now, I can literally see a path. It's just this tiny little bit left. So, fucking hell. That was fucking awful. I'm a Bodmin, Bodmin now. But, that last like 500 meters, I feel like a truck had to stop and let me go through. It was horrible. Welcome to Bodmin. So, uh, my feet are absolutely shredded. So I decided I'm gonna take a rest day. This is a pretty sweet field. At least I know I'm not gonna get eaten alive by gnats tonight. Uh, it's a little bit less private than I'd normally go for. But, this is really, really relaxing. You know that quote, I got blisters on my blisters? I got blisters on my blisters. I decided to take a rest day in Bodmin just to make sure that my feet could heal for a day. There wasn't a whole lot to do in Bodmin, but there is one thing I found. Good morning. So yesterday I had a uh, rest day in Bodmin to rest my poor feet. Uh, I pretty much spent the whole day in Weatherspoons, apart from going to the bank once to get some money out. Um, and to get, I also went to the shop to buy some new insoles for my shoes, which I'm an idiot and I cut too short, but I'm still gonna use them anyway. And uh, I got a new selfie stick because I lost my last one, of, I lost my newest other one as well. Cause I'm an idiot. So yeah, and then I spent literally from about eight o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night in Weatherspoons. <laughs> Taking a break in Bodmin did a world of good for my feet, and eventually I got back onto the road. Inner Cornwall became much more pleasant and I enjoyed walking along the quiet country roads through forests and nature. I felt calm and optimistic, forgetting about the trials at the start of my journey. It wouldn't be long before I made it to my first 100 mile mark in a place called Minions. Hey guys, we're on day seven. I'm about to hit my 100 mile mark today. So I think that's a cause to celebrate. Maybe we could celebrate by donating to the MS Society and helping a bunch of people out. It'll make you feel good. It'll make me feel good and we can get this done together. Captain's log. So, um, I'm in Minions, as you know. I found a camp campsite, which is awesome. Uh, only cost seven quid, awesome. Um, they even had somewhere I could shower. Lovely, it was like an orgasm. And I could also wash my clothes that I haven't washed for seven days and they literally stink like vinegar. It's that bad. Awesome. I wasn't far away from the border to Devon. But I wanted to make sure that I took in as much history as I could from Cornwall and that meant even more urban exploring. These tombs of industry are the last remnants to show Cornwall's success before they were thrown to the wolves and to starve. After the mining finally dried up, the only thing left to save Cornwall was its tourism. For me, Cornwall represents the difficult start I had at the beginning of my journey, all of the teething problems and lessons that I learned, and the friends that I had made. It's 
really cool. The beautiful beaches, the rugged coast, the harsh footpaths, the country lanes, and the relaxing towns. They all play a massive part in the beginning of my journey and my time winging it in the south. Hmm, quite dry. like a big chimney. I've seen Brave Dave try to climb up a chimney once and he nearly died, so I'm not going to do that. People have been staying here. Well, there wasn't any ancient relics in here, but it was cool to run around it. <laughs> hmm. Better get back on the road. So I've left the pub and I'm now heading to Dartmoor. Uh, officially made it into Dartmoor. I'm now walking into Dartmoor. I'm not going to lie, this is the one bit of my walk I was most worried about. Even like the Highlands don't worry as much as this because it's just Dartmoor, you know? A hound of Baskerville. I don't want to get eaten. More than anything, I don't want to get lost. But I don't want to get eaten either. Look at all those clouds above me. All those cumulus nimbuses. That view is beautiful. Almost one time enough to see This would be an amazing plot device for like a murder mystery or something, wouldn't it? Like the <laughs> ice cream lady. I've got to be up on the floor all the time. <laughs> but you could be the murderer, that would be perfect cover, wouldn't it? The ice cream lady that murders people and hides them on the moor. You'd be never fair. <laughs> oh yeah, you've got a freezer as well. I'm not sure I want ice cream now. Stay away from that. <laughs> Cool. 
haven't really been able to record it because every time I get to a pub, uh, my phone's dead and that's why I'm at the pub. Uh, but every time I go to a pub, I always try their local ale. So, so far I've had Doom Bar and Tribute from Cornwall. And tonight I tried uh, Legend from the Dartmoor, yeah, the Dartmoor Brewery. So that was really cool. And obviously I already had a Cornish pasty. So if there's any, I'm gonna have to find out if there's any like Devonshire dishes. They were selling haggis at the pub, but you know, we're not in Scotland yet. So fuck their haggis. So I've uh, opted for this big, huge moor field for my uh, my night tonight. It's pretty springy, so it should be should be pretty comfortable actually. Okay, so I didn't realise how bad the uh, bugs were here. <laughs> so and a bunch of them got in. So I'm sharing my bivy with a fuckload of flies. This is worse than the other night with the flies. Like I can't barely breathe. That's why I've got this over my mouth because I can't breathe without like breathing in flies so that sucks so i just bought a couple of postcards from a shop because but like it's a dying art nobody really does it anymore so i'm going to send one to uh, my family in newfoundland and one to my family in milton Keynes, and i'm gonna have a tea while i'm doing it As I began to leave Dartmoor, I found I had nowhere to stay. The forest I had to fight my way through was far too prickly. With the sun dwindling, I decided to go to the closest village around. sleeping in a church tonight. Fucked. 
so I need to go find something to fix my cell phone. Okay, so that's my uh, that's my night in research. Pretty cool. I have so many injuries. I need to kind of sort out. <laughs> it's really not good, but I have to try and head towards Exeter now. So it's only seven miles. Hopefully, I'll find somewhere I can have some sort of breakfast on the way. And we'll be, we'll be okay. So I'm on my way to Exeter now, so I can try and get some new boots. Uh, and I'm on a road called Six Mile Hill, which is just lovely. And I'm in Exeter. I have to say, at this point, I'm literally just limping. These boots have done so much fucking damage to my sh feet, it's just ridiculous. So I'm taking advantage of the free refill coffee. I've been in Weatherspoons for about uh, four hours now, having a free coffee. I've had one meal and I just let my feet rest. Uh, I've got a couch to stay out tonight, I've got a couch surface, so that's really good, and I'm going to have a rest day. I met Henry on couchsurfing.com, a website that I've used quite a lot to find places to stay in places that I've never been before. Henry was kind enough to take me around Exeter and give me a history lesson on all the iconic buildings. When we got back to his house, he was nice enough to cook for me, which was the first homemade meal I'd had in about two weeks. So that is my spider bite that I got on Dartmoor, and it kind of burst last night, and now it's just minging. I just cleaned it, that's why it looks a bit wet, but oh, it's so annoying. So I'm uh, couch surfing tonight at uh, my new friend Henry's and he's been an absolute awesome host. He showed me around Exeter and uh, we had a few beers, we had a few chats, watched some good comedy together uh, and yeah he's an awesome guy, I'm definitely going to stay in contact with him. If you're watching this mate, thank you so much, you've really really helped me so much rest my feet and uh, have a good rest day thank you so uh, I'm pretty much finished cat surfing with uh, Henry today uh, he's already gone to work so I can't introduce you unfortunately but I'm sure I'll see him again I just wrote in a little note on the back of a honey nut cornflakes thing because I couldn't find a piece of paper but I hope he likes that anyway so but I'm about to leave and I'm literally six days away from the end of the first leg That kills people! Okay, so I'm in Bradnich. I just went to a pub called The White Lion. I met a guy called Lou, a guy called Steve, and a bunch of other dudes who all wanted to buy me beer. Now I'm a bit drunk. <laughs> I was just sat here making lunch next to this guy's house, like on the side of the road. The fella came out and asked me what I was doing, how I was and all that sort of stuff and then I told him what he was doing so now he's making me a cup of tea he just gave me a whole packet of jammy dodgers and he's just like, it was such an honour to meet you it's like what you're doing is amazing and all that sort of stuff he's such a nice guy <laughs> on the downside though, my stone is really shit when it comes to wind the slightest breeze makes it slow down ridiculously so it takes me forever to make any food and obviously I'm running out of butane, so this isn't going to last long. just want to say thanks Bob for uh, the jammy dodges and the cup of tea. I really appreciate that. You gave me a massive morale boost as well, so you've been great, thank you. All the coolest shit seems to happen after my phone's dead, but basically what just happened in that village is I met a guy called Dan who owns his own business. 
teaching people how to ride horses and he was standing outside the post office with his horse and we started talking I told him what I was doing and it was like that's awesome man so he said we're gonna stay in contact and that's cool and then he was like do you want to go on my horse I'll take a picture of you and I'm like yes but I've never been on a horse before so <laughs> he helped me get on the horse took a picture of me and yeah but I didn't I couldn't record it obviously because my phone was fucking dead so here's a picture of it So I just realised that I have seriously ripped my trousers right in the uh, gentleman's region. Um, the good thing is at least my balls are getting aired out, but it's literally so such a big tear that you can almost see my ass. So that needs to be fixed, or I need to buy some new ones. <laughs> There's always something on this trip. I just found this completely open field, like that's where I just came from, completely open. There is an open gate over there, so maybe I'll get some trouble with animals in the morning, but I'm going to camp right next to the road so I can just get the fuck out if I need to. Uh, I've just got enough daylight <laughs> to set myself up. And it doesn't seem too bad today, like, at least I have grass, which I didn't have yesterday. I thought I'd just show you uh, what I said yesterday about my ripped trousers and yeah, they're pretty bad. Like, these aren't even redeemable. I have to walk like 15 miles at the least in these because there's nowhere I can buy trousers. I haven't got any kind of sewing kit or anything to patch it up with. And that's assuming I could even sew in the beginning, so. <laughs> so I uh, just went past a bin that's informed me that I'm now in Somerset. <laughs> It's a bit of a shame I must have missed uh, the sign or there wasn't a sign on my particular road but that's wicked isn't it I've now gone through two count counties and Devon and Cornwall didn't get me I've pretty much made it to the border of Ilchester now which is where I need to be so my phone's literally about to die I need to go find something to charge it so I'm now in the Ilchester Arms in Ilchester and the most amazing thing has happened. This lovely lady over here has not only given me a free pint of cider but also put me up for the night in a spare room and gave me a shower, bless her cotton socks. She And she also printed off a bunch of maps for me so I don't get lost tomorrow on the trail that I said I was going to try and take. So thank you so much. You've been amazing. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so I'm uh, in, well, I'm kicked out in, uh, in their spare room in the hotel and it's actually so nice because I don't have to worry about bugs. I don't have to worry about getting caught out by doggers or dog walkers <laughs> and uh, I don't know it's just comfy and happy and I just love it so I've also had a couple of pints which was nice and I'm really tired now <sighs> but I'm gonna go to bed I was just exploring uh, Ilchester and I found this beautiful little tea room called Claire's Tea Room and they just gave me a bunch of food. It's an airfield. <laughs> it looks like Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Evening ladies. I was nearing the end of my journey of the first leg of my walk when I met up with my cousin to walk for the last five miles. The last five miles of my last, well, my, the first leg of my journey, and I'm with my cousin who I'm staying with, and he was silly enough to decide to do the last five miles with me. And we're just burning in the heat now, and we're eating pizza and chilling out and trying to get on this stupid trail before we get to his house in Dilton Marsh. Is it Marsh or Marsh? Marsh. Dilton Marsh. That's funny. Why is it? It's been a problem. <laughs> Hey.
<laughs> Making it to my cousins was such an important milestone in my walk. I had walked 200 miles. Yeah, He's reborn from nature! I was emotionally exhausted, physically knackered, my feet were in ruins, and all I needed was a rest. Making it this far proved to myself and to everyone around me that I was serious about this walk. Mindy, 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 Mindy. Now I knew nothing could stop me, but first, a rest.